Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to convert JSON data to HTML. Um, now that you're getting data from the JSON API, you can in, you can display it in the HTML. For You can use a for each method to loop through the data since the cat object, cat photo object are held here, are held in an array. As you get to each item, you can modify the HTML elements. First, declare an HTML variable with the let HTML equals, and they just set it to an empty string. Then loop through the JSON, adding HTML to the variable that wraps the key names in strong tags, followed by the value. When the loop is finished, you render it. Here's the code that does this. So here we're setting HTML to a empty string, and then we're saying, for our JSON object, which we returned, we're gonna say, go through each one. And then we're gonna set each one to a value. So remember, we've got three cats. The val is gonna be equal to the first cat initially, and then it's gonna be the second cat, and then it's gonna be the third cat. So here, the constants is the keys. So the keys is set to that value. So if we run this, I think you can still see it. It's not rendering in there, bummer. But anyways, uh, the keys will be all the different keys in that object of the first value initially. And so then we're just going to start um, putting it in here. We're creating a div. Our HTML is empty, so we're adding from the empty one. We're adding a cat div to it. And then with each key, we're going through and we're going to say add to each one the, um, the key in a strong thing. And then we're going to grab the, the value and, and put it after a strong element, which makes it so it won't be bolded. So the key will be bolded and the uh, value because the value with the key at the position of the key is going to give you the string that's the result. And then we're gonna put a break line after that. So we're just building up the string and then our HTML here, because we started an open div here, we want to add our close div at the end of it. And then we're going to close out with a break line, which will cause us to get to the next line. Okay, uh, for this challenge, you need to add new HTML elements to the page. So you cannot rely on text content. Instead, you need to use inner HTML, which can make a site vulnerable to cross-site scripting attacks. Uh, okay, for <laughs> add a for each method to loop over the JSON data and create the HTML elements to display it. Here is some example JSON. So here we have the example. Um, cool. So the first thing, um, I'm going to stretch this guy out so we can see this really clearly. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're getting here on the click. We are setting up a request. Once the request is promised and it comes back to us, it loads up to us. We get our JSON as a variable called JSON, which is annoying. And then we're set HTML is the string. Uh, I'm going to stretch this out just a little bit more because I just want all of this to be on one line. And so we've got our HTML here. And so, yeah. I mean, I guess we'll just stick with this idea, right? They've got here, they're adding, we're gonna go, <clears throat> uh, so we're gonna go HTML, and first off, we want to start it off with a div, and what else did they want? Do they want it to be a class of cat? Instead, use, use the for each method to do it. Your code should store the data in the HTML variable. Your code should use a for each method to loop over the JSON data for the API. And your code should wrap the key names in strong tags. Hmm, cool. So we don't actually need to start it off with a div. So let's see if we can just not do that. So JSON dot for each, right? Um, let me console.log JSON real quick so we can see what we're working with. Okay, so here's what we're working with. This is our JSON object. So we can see it's an, it's an object here. That's one object. This is an object two, and this is an object three. So if we were to console log json.length and we called it out, we would get three. So we know we're working with, if we were to go, we could go type of, and that would get us an array. Okay, but arrays are types of objects, so that makes sense. Um, so yeah. Right now we've got that. So what we want to do is iterate over this. So we go uh, for each, and then we'll just add it in a function. Uh, we should get rid of the console log here. <clears throat> uh, we're going to add a callback function now. 
And now let's call each of these our cat. And so now what happens if we console.log or cat and we run the API request? Cool, now we're getting something different, right? We're inside of here and we've got one, two, three. And so what happens if we console log? Let's say, well, they just want us to do the key value pairs. So cat uh, dot, let's go cat dot, um, we can go object dot keys, right? So object dot keys will get us the uh, keys that are in that element. So if we just run this, we're gonna get ID, image link, alt text, and code name. Now, I think your code should wrap. Your code should use for each to loop over the JSON data from the API. Okay, we're doing that. Your code should store the data in the HTML variables. And your code should wrap the key names in strong parameters. Well, here's our key names, right? Um, I mean, we could just... The key names in parameters. Okay, so up here, what were they doing? They were adding a strong in there with the keys. So for each, okay, so here they're actually doing a second for each loop over the keys. Huh. Well, here's the key names. I mean, if, to, to me, we could say, we could go dot string to string like this, right? And then we're gonna be getting, when we call this, we're gonna get them in strings. And we could just add uh, strong, stop strong over here. And then uh, the open strong element over here, right? And then when we ran this, we would just get those in HTML. And then document get element by class name message enter HTML is equal to HTML. Okay, so instead of console logging it, we'll just say, uh, this is gonna be funny if this works. <clears throat> HTML plus equals, and we're just adding it to each one. So now when we ran it, it should be here. I think technically that passes all the tests. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, we render it out and we get this, and we just get the name of the keys all stretched out. And that's technically what they were asking for. But I wonder, you know, it's not actually that good, you know, it's kind of useless. Um, you know, each one has a key value pair. So maybe instead of, well, we can simplify it by using an arrow function here. And we can simplify this by using an arrow function here. Simplify this by using an arrow function here. But um, still, this is just kind of ridiculous. I think that, I mean, one thing we could do is add a break line within each of these points, right? So. And we can clean up the code by putting the pluses that side and making it a little easier to read. Um, and now if we were to run it, we'd at least have it like this, right? But um, I mean, we're just throwing all the keys into one thing. It's kind of useless, really. So what if we went through each one? And so each time we're gonna have the keys, we could set up um, API, we can say let API response keys be equal to the cat keys, right? And so now if we were to console.log the API response keys, I think what we should have when we run this, yeah, we're getting it with each one. So now we could say, um, that's this, the keys. What we can do is say uh, dot, yeah, instead of logging this, we can just go through and iterate through each of the keys each time. So we could say for each, and we say a key, and we return this. And now, what happens if we console.log our JSON at position of key? <clears throat> and we run it to see if it works, undefined. Let's see, what happens if we just do key? I think like I'm making a simple mistake. We run the keys, we get ID, image link so uh oh it's cat at position of key because this is the object and then this is the value okay cool so now we're actually getting some semi-useful information right and what happens let's console log um 
Yeah, if we run this again, this is the cat. This is the one uh, for each. Hmm. Yeah, now. And we can also throw a key in there. What happens if we get the message? Now we've got ID, image link, alt text, code names, and we're adding it in there. So that's cool. So what we could do now is we could say HTML and we add, and in there we're going to say uh, strong, and then um, the key, and then close the strong. Okay, so now what we're doing is passing the key into the into here, and then we could also go. Uh, not key, but uh, the cat key. So that will get us the value of that key. And we can just make this emphasized or something. And now if we run the test, now we're actually getting useful information, right? One thing I'm noticing is it's not spaced out very well. So we should probably add a line break here. And now, now we're doing something kind of cool, right? Now we're actually getting data from here and we're able to actually make it readable. Uh, I wonder if that passes the test. Cool, that does too. So yeah, this is the kind of thing that we can use APIs for. And so right now what we're doing is we're pulling the data out and we're running it through here, which I think is pretty cool. Um, yeah, we might be doing that in the next lesson. So I hope I didn't just double the work, but I still feel like this was useful for you to learn, even if this isn't directly related to passing free code camp. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. See you in the next one.